Hi guys, this is Bhavna Naik from Bhavna's Henna and Arts. I'm here today to just have a conversation. Um, let's get real. Let's get real about henna, about how to do henna, how it's done in its best way and the best location, the best day and the best outfit to get your henna in. These kind of real things are not discussed and are just uh, guessed or estimated or seen in movies and taken from that but let me get real here what you see in a movie is not how it really works in real life uh, so to start with let's say what day do you need to get your henna done if you're a bride if your wedding is on a Saturday your ideal date or day for henna is usually a Wednesday or a Thursday henna needs between 24 to 48 hours to get dark your palm gets dark within 24 hours but the thinner skin which is the skin on the back of your hand or anything above going to your elbow takes between uh, 48 to 72 hours actually to get to its darkest point so if you have a wedding on a saturday your best days are wednesdays and thursdays if you really need the artist and you are very committed to keeping your henna dry on wednesday you can still do a tuesday uh, a bridal henna on Tuesday and don't touch water on Wednesday at all and you still can have a good thriving stain on Saturday. There are some people who uh, will discuss what kind of outfit uh, should they wear for their henna and my ideal outfit is something with pants like a sharara pant or a salwar or dhoti salwar or a legging or pajama also be comfortable uh, the key is that you are comfortable uh, henna also makes you very cold you can get uh, cold as uh, three degrees cooler in your body so some people really cannot handle the localized cold and they do shiver if you have some sort of pants some some kind of legging on the the feeling of coolness is reduced also you are sitting in front of a henna artist and uh, especially if it's me I put you on a high chair uh, to do your feet and I move legs apart in weird positions I would prefer that my uh, my bride would be wearing some sort of pants uh, that can be rolled up easily pinned up easily when you think of wearing a lehenga and it has a lot of can can in it or even a sharara with can can it makes it very difficult for the bride you cannot even drop that outfit down after the henna is dry because the can can will just peel off all the henna and all the all the artwork is kind of disappeared um, so don't go with a lehenga for your bridal henna application you must wear something like a dhoti salwar or a sharara that can be pinned up uh, the ideal location that's also something that i discuss with my brides i tell them that you want to stay away from the chaos of the house uh, you know if everyone is doing things in the kitchen in the living room and there is so much of chaotic conversations happening you want to be away from that and enjoy the peaceful the peace that henna can actually give you the peaceful experience uh, in in you know a lot of people will, will argue here and say well in india there's always chaos and people are always around and we get henna done but let me explain that people who live here who have grown up here are not used to the chaos are not used to so many opinions so many people popping in and out and uh, that sometimes create anxieties and your bride will display the anxiety in twitching moving or just I've had brides who have been puked because of just so many people around them so to just have a peaceful uh, experience with henna it's always better that I tell my brides let's go to the basement where we won't be disturbed as much because people tend to come down a little less they don't want to do so many stairs and I get enough space by a wall with plug points so I can plug in my heater and I have a good five by five feet of space to set up my setup so the best location is your basement in your house where we would be uh, set up in a place where we have space and privacy and uh, the calming you can actually experience the calming effects of henna because the wedding chaos and everything is going to start after that so that's your one day to really be at peace and sometimes you know henna artists we literally are like therapists 
we will listen to all your concerns and we will absorb whatever you have to tell us because it's it's necessary that you vent out everything before everything starts and you know it's out of your system and you feel so relaxed so this was my tidbit information for all you brides out there who ask me you know in india they do it this way why can't we do it that way why don't we do it with the guest well because even with a guest it's distracting to the henna artist it's distracting to you even when you turn to talk to someone you turn your neck your shoulder moves your shoulders connected to your arm your arm moves you know you are my canvas you are my paper so if you even have a slight movement it does affect the design i do have to compromise on details of the design when there is movement so the best ideal way is uh Yes, have a conversation with your henna artist, have a conversation with one or two, uh, you know, cousins or family members who are sitting next to you. But there's not a lot of chaos going around, not a lot of moving and checking out people and, you know, talking to them, moving your head, you know, maybe moving your shoulders, talking. We also talk because we're Indian, we talk with our hands. So our hands will, you know, emulate our feelings and we're talking, we twitch our fingers and all. So this is all the information I had for today, but I thought I should come online and tell you guys that what you need to wear, where you need to get your henna done, and what day is best for your henna application so that this is out there into the world and you have all the information. I will come back again with some other questions if somebody has, I'll throw in the answers online over here. So thank you and thank you so much for supporting and taking care of my business. I really appreciate you. Thank you.